Coming set, here is the 2-0 pitch to Saratelli. Swung on and hit high in the air, down the right field line, and it is gone! A home run! Hello and welcome to another episode of Jersey Filmmaker. I'm Anthony Saratelli, and if you didn't know, prior to my career in the production world, I played baseball as a profession, as you saw, in the intro. Saratelli. I hung on for 10 years playing for the Royals, the Mets, and in Japan for a team called the Seibu Lions, but spending most of my time with Kansas City. I was lucky enough to come up through the ranks with a bunch of current major leaguers and World Series champions like Mike Moustakis, Salvador Perez, Eric Hosmer, and many, many more. My stint with the Royals ended in 2013, but being that I'm friendly with the guys, I got to attend a lot of the World Series games that they played in in 2014 and 2015. What worked out best of all is that they played right here in my backyard in 2015 against the New York Mets to seal the deal and become world champions. Thanks to my buddies, I had an incredible time, experienced this almost as if I was a player. I got to be down on the field with family and friends for all the hugs and high fives, in the clubhouse for the champagne celebration, and I even got to meet Paul Rudd. So fast forward four months, and to get to the point of this video, I flew out to spring training in February 2016, rounded up the guys for a backyard barbecue to sit down and reminisce about things from the day we signed all the way up through becoming world champions, and of course, I filmed it. So the good news is, I ended up making a cool intro that I want to review with you so I could show you how I did the motion graphics and animation. The bad news is, I'm going to tease you with said intro because the full video isn't public. We did this as a keepsake for ourselves and to show the grandkids down the road, so for right now, I'm sorry to say, it's highly classified. But never mind that, let's focus on the intro graphics and take a look right now. Hey, that's recording? Huh? Yeah. Jeez. Hey, what do you mean? He goes, no. Oh my God. So as you saw, I did the same thing with each graphic for each guy. I'm going to go ahead and break down how I accomplished this with the first one that appears in the video, Eric Hosmer. Let's take a look at the full motion graphic to get started here. You can see the name flies on from the right, name up top flies on from the left, Haas gets a little bit bigger, and the background gets a little bit smaller to add a whole bunch of movement to this short motion graphic. So let's strip this down to the first layer. So here we have a still of the frame I want to use for the final graphic. First order of business is to mask Haas out, and doing so leaves you with a black background or a transparent background so we can add anything we like on the layers above or below. Let's bring this back and I'm going to add a lumetri color adjustment with some saturation and sharpness, and then I'm going to texturize. As you can see, I'm pulling the texture from this baseball field grass layer number seven. But if you look down here, there is no layer number seven. Let me explain that. This button here is a hide all layers button. If I toggle the switch, this looks very similar to these buttons here. These buttons are called shy buttons. If I unclick this, you'll see layer seven pops up. So if I click it, it goes away, unclick it, it comes back. That's because we have this layer shied. If you click on any of these little guys and they shy away and kind of hide down, you can then click on the hide layers button and any of the layers you have selected will go away. And I'm just hiding all of them right now. So I can unhide them by doing so. The reason you'd want to do this is if you have a ton of layers and you want to just get rid of whatever's not needed so it doesn't get in your way. In this situation, I don't need this layer to be visible because I'm just grabbing the texture from it. So let's take a look at this layer. Originally, it's just baseball field grass in the outfield. I put a tint on it to make it black and white, and now it's the texture I like. I hide it, hide it, and now I pull that texture from layer seven, and you can see the difference when I toggle it on and off. Next, we're gonna add the background. Let's take a look at that by itself. As you can see, it's the same still that we masked Haas out on earlier. I add a tint to take away all the color, knowing that I'm going to want Eric to be saturated here and a black and white background. So back to the bottom layer, you can see that it doesn't quite make it to the edges because this is shrinking as it goes through the animation. So what I do is add a motion tile. 
if you add a motion tile and increase the output width, it will then duplicate the edges all the way around, literally mirroring exactly what it sees. So it can look a little funny, but this layer is going to be so covered up anyways that won't be noticeable. I then add a fast blur just to blur out the background. I texturize it the same way, and then I pull down the exposure so that when we put Oz back on top, it really stands out, as opposed to him blending in at the same exposure. You can see here I have another layer behind Haas, and that's to put a little glow around him. If we solo this layer, you can see I have the same Lumetri color adjustment, same texturize effect, and I added a glow in the alpha channel around the perimeter of Haas, so that when I put this layer behind the main top layer here, it gives a nice little outer glow. Next, let's bring in the rest of the background. Same thing with this original shot that I grabbed off the internet on one of my stock footage sites. I add a tint to it to make it black and white. I drop it in over the background. However, if we toggle these switches here to see what blending mode we're using, you'll notice I'm using an overlay blend. If I had it on normal, you wouldn't even be able to see the layer under it, which is the one we set up here. So by using overlay, it allows for the layer to see through a little bit, kind of just lowering the opacity in a sense to give this a little more depth. Blending modes, in my opinion, are a trial and error type thing. I pretty much know what they're going to do at this point because I've used them so often, but the best way to do it is to just go through and see what they are until you get something you like. Again, trial and error. Next, we'll bring in his name, which is going to fly on and off like so. And you can see I animated it with keyframes through the position. And for some reason, I used the mask on the second one instead of animating the position, but it still works. They fly on together to reveal his name. And then last but not least, I add his name in the background here just to fill in some space and to make it look cooler. If I solo this layer, you'll see it's just big block letters with, again, an overlay blending mode. Every blending mode will do something different. And of course, this is below the layers of Haas. If we put it in front, that would look a little funny going over his face. So we make sure it stays behind. And there we have it. So if we take one more look, we have his name flying on from the right. We have his name flying on from the left. Haas is getting a little bit bigger while the background gets a little bit smaller. A cool, simple, three second animation. The last thing I want to do is show you how I animated these onto the screen. You'll see that I literally just pop it onto the screen when necessary. But you'll notice this white bar. You see it pops in the screen here on this frame. Next frame, it's in the middle. Third frame, it's on the right. So I use that with a swiping sound and then swiping sounds on the names as well to amplify this effect. And then same thing on the way out, the white bar pops on the screen, second frame I swipe the whole screen with the white bar, and third frame the white bar is on the right again. And what I should have done here, which I didn't do, is put a motion blur on the background. This is too hard of an edge, this should be blurred out since it's moving so fast across the screen. Thankfully it is so fast that you probably don't notice, let's see, I mean it is hard to tell but I should have put that motion blur on there. So that's the gist of it, a very simple yet effective way to add some quality and production value to your videos. A cool little postcard intro for these guys until we get into the meat of the video. So that's all for my Royal Barbecue motion graphics and animation breakdown. If you liked it, please click the like button, subscribe and click the little bell so you get alerts to all future videos. If you have any comments or questions about anything at all, please feel free to leave them below or contact me on my social medias at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.